Well, good afternoon. Welcome back to another Saturday Shotgun with ICT. This one probably won't be that long. I'm a little uncomfortable today, but and you'll probably hear all kinds of banging about above. But it is what it is. Things can't get done without breaking some eggs, I guess, huh? So, yesterday morning, <laughs> I told myself all week, don't lift anything, don't do anything, you know, let them do everything. Nope, I had to be helpful. <laughs> and I helped them throw my back out. So, I'm in a little bit of discomfort today. So, try not to do too many things. Even sitting in one place is painful. Standing is hurting. It's a mess. But anyway, I want to talk to you about uh, this past week and what might be on the horizon and how that might affect the markets going into the close of the year. So we've seen the dollar index. It's dropped off a lot. And I mentioned, I'm not sure if it was the last Twitter space or the one before. It was within the last two that I did. I mentioned how Saudi Arabia was uh, lining up with uh, the the BRICS nation you know, coalition, if you want to call it that, where they're uh, basically you know, telling the U.S. <laughs> pound sand. <laughs> you know, everybody's gonna gonna get a good price, but the uh, ICT, I mean not ICT, but America, they're not getting uh, a good deal on on fuel or oil. When we don't really need their oil anyway, you know, we have plenty of oil here and we could tell everyone, you know, see you later. And we can actually go into the export business and do very well as well. But it just goes to show you how corrupt everything is. But because our dollar is a, pret is a petrodollar, it is backed by nothing. And years ago, our nation went to Saudi Arabia and said, hey, look, you know, we're going to protect you. <laughs> Nobody was threatening them at the time, but we're going to we're, we're going to protect you from threats. All you got to do is sell your oil in dollars. So anybody who wants to buy your oil, they must convert it to the U.S. dollar. So when we were taken off the gold standard, our currency was worthless, like it was literally nothing. And then now it was backed by the oil market through Saudi Arabia. A lot of people don't realize that or understand that, but. Now we are in a position where the perfect storm is brewing. And my private mentorship has known about this for a while. I've, I've talked about it publicly as well in the last year. They have obviously weaponized food and the production of food. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just do a little research and homework. And a lot of people that denied me, you know, the stage talking about it early on. When nobody else was talking about it, they thought it was lunacy. Uh, just because you see it on your grocery store shelf doesn't mean that it's not occurring. There's a lag, okay? Everything you buy in the store, canned goods, vegetables, and things like that, uh, that was last year's crop. And the production for all of 2023, that's going to be significantly less. So that's going to create a shortage, basically. And the cost of those types of foods are going to go up, which is kind of like what I want to talk about today. And you may be thinking, well, what's this got to do with anything? How does this affect the S&P? How does this affect crypto? How does this affect you know, my day-to-day -day life? Well, it means things are going to get really expensive, probably hard to get. And if they are not producing much of it, that means the commodity market is going to be extremely bullish in the grains you know, corn, soybean, wheat, those types of commodities. We'll probably see historical rallies in 2023 because of engineered famine. The folks that were in my private group, you know, were fearful. They missed it. I said, this is not it. That The initial run up, you know, that was just based on this year. The dollar has rallied and commodity mega trade type scenarios uh, for commodities to go up vertically, like in the 70s in the grain markets and stuff like that, go back and look at old historical moves and you'll see that it had really amazing run-ups. And then we had some more in the 90s, which was fun. But 
we're going to see something we've never seen before. Like parabolic, like it'll make Bitcoin's rally look like a Judas swing. Yeah, because it's the whole world. The whole world is going to feel that pain of not being able to have enough food. And all these rich cats out there buying up all this farmland makes you wonder why would they want to do that? Remember when I was telling, uh, if you're in my private group, when we saw them talking about the creation of water futures, in other words, there's a commodity contract that trades water. So I told them, I said, you know, we're going to have a problem with that because <laughs> if they're trying to make water tradable, well, you know what that means. They're going to start manipulating it like they, they do everything else. So water's an issue that's become an issue for farmers. And all of these things go under the radar of the average person. You know, you go up to your bed at night and you fall asleep thinking about how you don't want to go to work tomorrow or next week because Friday night when you go to bed, you're thinking, I only got two days. I got to start all over again. How's this ever going to make its way to your attention? It won't because the news isn't going to tell you prepare for that kind of stuff. So as a trader, as a speculator, some of the sharpest people in the world are commodity traders. The folks that are long-term horizon type individuals where they see like crop reports. And I'm, I'm not claiming I understand all that because I don't. But I see all these little things that are coming together perfectly. Okay. And I've been bullish on dollar for a while. And I try not to pick tops in any market really. And I've went out and said that we could probably see dollar at 120. Now, in recent market action this week, and with the recent discussions because of Saudi Arabia saying, you know, <laughs> you know we're going to go in the direction with Russia and China and Brazil and India, and they're, they're all forming this anti-dollar movement. And that's one way of taking the dollar down. Because if they get Saudi Arabia to sign on, you know, what does Saudi Arabia need our protection for? They feel like they got the bear and the dragon behind them. And that type of thing makes me think about the book of Daniel. That fourth and dreadful, terrible beast. It's starting to look like that. Brick's nation, you know, is it. But that's another discussion for another day. Thought I was going to start preaching, didn't you? <laughs> the dollar may be showing initial signs of, well, if Saudi Arabia is doing what it appears to be doing, our dollar really has no value, has none. So that sets the stage for we need a replacement. We need to have something to replace it, okay? Uh, the central bank digital currencies, they're going to become a thing, and every nation is going to have their little thing, and that will also fail. And the one thing fix the solution will be the one currency whatever currency that will be in the future i don't know but i am telling you and raja listen you can crack jokes all you want but forex is going away might as well get used to trading other markets because forex foreign exchange is going to die just like open outcry pit trading in commodities it doesn't exist anymore Forex is going to go away. It's not going to be accessible to you. You're not going to be able to do it. So if you'd like to sit around and pretend that you know that can't happen, it's going to be an abrupt shock to you when it's done. Now, will it be done in, in the scope of banning it? I don't know. But we will not be able to do it. Okay, so you need to be thinking about alternative ways of speculating and trading. So there will always be companies out there. These companies that make money 
selling goods to people because there's going to be people that are going to be consumers. They're going to need services, those types of things. My attention shifted back to my roots. I'm in futures trading again. I don't want to touch Forex. I don't ever want to be back in Forex ever again. Index futures, easy. When there's a mega trade, something significant, then I'll trade those markets like the grains I'm talking about in the beginning of this conversation. So if we can look at the whole macro perspective for a moment, okay? And this might be a little bit boring for some of you, but just understand where, man, that did not sound good upstairs. I'm trying to think about where I'm at and what that sound could have been. Give me a second here. That would be a table sliding on a floor that better not be leaving a mark. All right, that's going to be in my head now the whole time we're talking. So the dollar, if this is correcting, okay, I mean, that's a good far as to say, let's say the dollar has topped. I'll play devil's advocate for a moment. I don't know for certain that it has because I try to avoid picking tops and bottoms and long-term moves. But let's just say that the dollar has seen its high for the next 12 months, okay? I'm not stating that I believe that, but let's just say that it is. That would set the groundwork for lower dollar. Commodity prices are allowed to go higher then because when dollar goes down, grains, meats, oils, all those types of things, it's real easy for it to rally because it's an inverse relationship. So if dollar has been going up, it's real hard to have mega trades where these currencies, or not currency, rather, these grains like corn, soybeans, wheat, the things that people use to make the food, anything you eat, you go to your pantry, you go to your cabinet, you go to your refrigerator, you open it up. Those things that are in there, unless they're main staple items like eggs, milk, sugar, salt, you know, flour, you, if you're buying something that's processed, all of those foods have multiple things in, inside of them. And it's been gathered from the world's grocery store, mainly like United States, we're a big bread basket, you know, Russia, you know, they have a, you know, a grain export as well. And you see these big countries are saying, no, we're not doing it. We're not exporting. We're keeping ours. And I've been telling my private group this for almost two years. And they think it's going to happen right away. Like it's something that's okay. You know, you're not going to have food in the grocery stores this weekend. No, it's, you need to prepare, get ready for it. Get a two year, at least at least a six month stock of non-perishable foods and go through them, use them and replace what you use. Because in 2023, we are going to see crazy famine level nuttery. It's going to be nuts because grains will not be coming to yield like they normally would because fertilizer costs quadruple almost. Okay. Yeah. You know, if you tell a farmer, you can't use this much water now, and this is how much fertilizer costs, and now you got too much carbon, so you can't plant that much. You see where all this is going? This is the next big thing. So you're all waiting for crypto to come back alive. That's dying. Okay. Forex is dying. Food. Food. That, that's going to be the market that people will absolutely be buying up because you need it. You don't need a crypto. You don't need a Forex. You don't need it. You don't need it. But everybody needs to eat. Everybody has to feed themselves or their young ones. Now, what are you willing to do to keep from starving? Now, contrast that with what you're willing to do if you miss a crypto trade or a Forex trade. Eh, it's annoying. But what happens if your children are hungry and you don't have anything in the pantry to feed them? You're going to start thinking about things that you necessarily wouldn't be thinking about right now and what you do want to do. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a God-fearing man, but I know I would be doing things that would probably be very unsavory to make sure my family eats. 
If you have extra, I'm going to ask politely the first time. And that's just being real. Imagine the whole world like that. That's going to make food prices go through the roof. And it's all being engineered, not in one country, everywhere. So we're seeing that potential turning of the tide where dollar has been rallying aggressively. Really, really hard, aggressive. Why? It's been flexing on all the other currencies. But Saudi Arabia is that little cornerstone I've mentioned. Watch that one. I told my students, keep your eye on the Middle East. When the shoe drops, you'll know. And it seems like that formation of the BRICS nation, that whole you know, anti-dollar movement, and their currency is going to be backed by gold. Hello, that's real money. That's not crypto, and that's not dollars. That's real money. That's a real currency. That's a real currency that has a backing of what is considered biblical money, gold. You go into any country, gold's recognized. <laughs> you start flashing, uh, you know, Confederate dollars. You know, they're like, "What is that? That's monopoly money." Nobody's going to care about that. But reach inside of a, a case and pull out a bar of gold, and you'll be lucky if you live. So they're hoarding up all the gold. If you've been watching the last twelve months or so, there's been huge withdrawals from physical gold depositories where they're holding on to gold, there's been huge withdrawals of gold. Why? What is going on that everybody wants to get their hands on their gold? Because something really big's coming. And they already told you what it is. It's the great reset. It's the great shafting is what it is. And a lot of people are going to be caught off guard they're going to be starving. They're going to be doing without because they think it's too science fiction to prepare for it. But all you have to do is look at the markets and they're telling you. Remember, remember how crypto was supposed to be. This is the Robin Hood, the savior of all fiat currency victims. Go out into the world and transfer your currencies into Bitcoin. seems to be there's a lot of celebrities and such, even YouTubers have got themselves tangled up in a web of supporting these ideas and these schemes and scams and frauds. And now people are left without their money. Even my own son. I told Cody, I said, do not invest that money in that crap. Don't do it. Oh, dad, you don't know. You're so old and fuddy duddy. You know, you're setting your ways and just watch this young generation. I'm going to watch this young generation do exactly what the fuck the dot com bubble did. I said, don't do it. <laughs> OK. See, you only get to be a, a old dinosaur in this business if you do the right things. And there's always these young guys that come out and they think they know something better than the old heads. And I'm sorry. <laughs> Wisdom comes with age. And I might be all racked up here with a back that's thrown out. I'm going to tell you something. My net worth is bigger than yours, and my understanding about the markets is bigger than yours. If I'm telling you this stuff, I'm helping you. Don't arm wrestle me. It's not a competition. I'm trying to help you. You can, number one, prevent yourself from potentially going hungry or maybe even profit from it. How? Well, if the dollar is... In fact, topped out. And I'm not saying that specifically here. I'm looking for further evidence of that because it's about this time where it should be doing it anyway, because that sets up the moves that go into next year for grains. So I'm looking at the correlation between lower prices on dollar. And if everybody around the world saying we're not going to be able to produce as much wheat, corn, soybeans, oats. Rice. And if you don't have rice in your house, bags of it, you should start getting it. 
because it's probably going to be 10 times more expensive next year. Oh, I don't eat rice. You'll eat rice if you're hungry. And you can do a lot of things with rice. But all those grains, if everything is what all these signs and indications are pointing to, less water being allowed to be used by farmers, they can't get as much fertilizer because it's too expensive. And their countries are saying, you can't produce this much because of the carbon footprint. You have too much nitrogen. Come on, man. Like, all you have to do is take a step back and look at it. Do you not see that that's being engineered? It's in your face right now. And I'm talking to the three guys that were in my private group that literally cussed me out in the email. I'm pissed off at you because you didn't listen to me. And now it's obvious. It's in your face. And when we get into 2023, if you didn't listen, you're going to so, so regret it. You can't make money if you're starving. You're not going to think clearly. And it's easy right now. You go to the grocery store. Oh, it's there. I see tea's full of shit. You have a three-day stock. That's what you have at your grocery store. If shit breaks out, say um, a BOMB falls somewhere in the United States. We don't need to say who it was that did it. But every grocery store out there will empty immediately. Who's going to come and fill it back up? Nobody. You got what you got. Good luck. Everybody is three meals away from starvation. You don't realize it, but that's really what it is. So you have to prepare. It's all part of being prepared as a investor. Having a, a clear mind to be able to decide what it is that you're going to be doing. Because you cannot trade scared money. Scared money will not make you any money. And if you don't have these things sorted out beforehand, I have food stocks. I have water filters. I have water. I have means to, to medicate myself over the counter medications that would normally be a hindrance on being sick or whatever. You're not worried about COVID. You're not worried about RSV. You know, they're trying to scare the hell out of you again. People get sick, folks. <laughs> it's, it, it's part of life. If you're going to die, you're going to die. Ain't nothing to worry about. You can't stop it. But you have to make preparations for these things to get even harder. And a lot of you young folks out there just think you're invincible. And I'm so thankful that this wasn't happening when I was 20. Because I would have dismissed all of it. I would not be listening to me right now. I would have already turned this off. And that would have been it. But I'm thankful I've been able to be in this world long enough to know and how it operates and where we're heading is not pleasant. And all of you people out there that are running around thinking that you're going to have Forex forever, man, you, you just simply don't know. You don't know. So if the dollar's coming down, that gives you a gateway to have mega trades. That means these big, extrapolated, violent, one-way direction moves. That's a real bull market. That's a real commodity that has real supply and demand factors still because people need to eat. You don't need your British pounds. You don't need to buy British pounds in the U.S. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. You don't need to buy IBM shares or Amazon shares or Tesla shares. You don't need to do that. But you do need to fill your pantry up. You do need to put eggs, bread, milk, and those main staples in your house. Those things are real. That stuff is going to be hard to get your hands on going into 2023. If you can, it's going to be so expensive. It's going to be stressful. So you need to be able to Mitigate that as early as you possibly can. Start you know, making preparations for that. And also preparing yourself for opportunities in the marketplace because crypto ain't it. 
folks. It's not it. The commodity markets, the old wheat, corn, soybean, those types of moves that we saw years ago in the 90s, they're going to be trumped by enormous rallies. Coffee. I don't like coffee. I love the way it smells. I love the way it smells, except for the ones that my wife likes. <laughs> they stink. I don't know why she even drinks that garbage. But hey, you know, she says she loves the way it tastes. I think it smells like shit, but you know, it is what it is. But Starbucks or you know, go into the coffee aisle in the grocery store. I love that. I love that smell. I have a collection of cologne. I have two fragrances that smell like a coffee house. And probably like what? It smells gorgeous. It smell it's a gourmand fragrance. It's beautiful. It smells amazing. I get so many compliments. But coffee itself, I can't drink it. And you're probably saying, "What the hell is he going on about coffee for?" Coffee is a commodity. Coffee, you can make a lot of money in coffee trading it. And when it moves, it moves fast. Over three hundred dollars a cent, and you're looking at a move that could potentially go violently straight up if people can't get what. If they can't get their caffeine through coffee, what happens to them? They're nuts, right? I can't function without my coffee. <laughs> I'm glad I've never been a victim to that, but I can see. I've, I've been married to a woman that needs that stuff. She's addicted to it. But that's going to be a, a commodity that is affected by what's coming to sugar. Sugar right now, <laughs> unless you're a diabetic or something like that, you should be getting it. Cocoa, real quiet market right now. But all those things are going to be expensive going into the next year because you're not going to get your hands on them. But the main ones are grains to me. That's the one I'm watching. And we saw this big run up and we corrected. And everybody's forgot about it right now. Nobody's talking about corn and soybeans and wheat and oats. They're not talking about it. And the dollar's slipping. And the fundamentals are Saudi Arabia saying, yeah, it's been nice, but see you, Biden. They found new friends. New mafia protectors. <laughs> they ain't worried about getting shaken down anymore. So what's the dollar backed by? Mm -hmm. What's the British pound backed by? Mm -hmm. The euro. Yeah. It's an illusion. Then you have these nations coming together saying, we are going to put an end to Western rule. Just replace that with dollar-based, you know, that's that's really what they're saying. And it was going to happen. I mean, we played bully for years and decades. We tried to be the cops, but we were also the people that are doing the biggest crimes against humanity and other nations. We don't like your president. We're going to do you a favor, and we're going to put one in that we like. <laughs> what? How long can you do that before other countries say, hey, you know, <laughs> This ain't the right guy to be backing. And we're seeing that, that formation, this collaboration between other nations that are literally turning their back on the dollar. And the average person doesn't see it. My kids aren't in public schools, but I guarantee they're not teaching it in schools either. It's going to be one of those things where <gasps> something happened. Who could have seen that coming? All of you now. All of you. And you have two choices, obviously. You can listen to this and dismiss it. Oh, this guy's tinfoil hat shit. Okay. Or you can listen to it and say, okay, this is opportunity. Opportunity is now here. Whereas... The first group would be looking at it and listening and thinking there's no opportunity here. Opportunity is nowhere. And for those that are still listening, you see it as opportunity is now here. 
put all those letters together, they look the same, but the perception is different. See, as a speculator, as a commodity trader, I look at war. I look at pestilence and famine, disease and terrible incidents in the world and say, that's horrible. I couldn't do anything personally to stop that. My heart goes out to those people. But there's opportunity there's, there's opportunity in that. And it sounds horrible to someone that hasn't been a speculator or a trader. But why wouldn't you take that event that you didn't cause, you didn't create it, you can't stop it, you can't remedy it? Is it a moral dilemma for you to profit off of it? I don't believe it is. Now, I'll leave it for you, the audience members, to wrestle with that. Oh, I, I couldn't do that. No. You're doing it every time you take a trade, folks. Because on the other side of that trade, there's someone that's taking the same risk, just viewing it oppositely. You, is there a word, oppositely? <laughs> if it isn't, I just coined it. You're, you're victimizing someone on the other side of your trade. If you're right and you made money, they were a victim of that speculation. So don't preach to me. I'm not going to look at the Twitter yet, but I'm sure somebody's like, oh, it's a terrible outlook. It's the reality of it all. When I go in and I put a trade on, I'm hoping the person on the other end of that trade is dead wrong. I'm not lying to you. I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. I want these motherfuckers to be wrong. I want their money. That's why I'm doing this. I'm not trading to be Mr. Rogers friendly. You know, hey, I'm on this business to go in here and lose to everybody else because I feel like giving my money away. And, you know, what else is there better to do? Let me just go in here and pick losing trades. So that way the other guys out there can start making money. That means I'm a, I'm a good person. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm in this business to make money. And that's the only reason why you should be here. So you shouldn't be wrestling with any kind of moral dilemma about finding opportunity in terrible events that you didn't cause. They are th Those victims were already victims, okay? You're not taking anything from them. You're not preventing them from getting aid. You're just looking at the cause and effect, how that's going to be viewed in the marketplace. And that sentiment shift, you're participating in that, that speculation. And if you're wrestling with that, because you know, I had students come to me, Christian, do you think that trading is gambling? And does God look at what we do as gambling? Well, the lot is in the hand of the Lord. So if you believe that and you ask of him to grace you with a blessing, and he allows you to have it. Does that sound like God saying, no, this isn't something you shouldn't be doing? I don't think, and I'm going to say this statement. I'm going to get off this topic because I could go on this for a long time. I know there's people in here who don't want to hear this. But I wanted to touch on this because it can't not be discussed and that not be an issue. Because I know some of you are listening and thinking, okay, but this is something bad. My church members would frown on this. You know, uh, maybe we're trying to get a club together and uh, you know, I'm learning from this guy. Now he's here or they're listening to this podcast or whatever it is I'm doing here. And I'm cussing and I'm saying you should be profiting off of people dying in a war. And you know, it, it doesn't sound like something they would want to participate in. I'm not saying that's what we do. I'm saying that that's, where sometimes, unfortunately, great opportunity is there. And here's what you can do with that. You can take that windfall victory and turn around and bless other people with it. That's all you got to do. If I profit and I see someone in need, I don't broadcast it and say, I go out here and I did this today. Give me my uh, attaboy publicly. I don't virtue signal for that crap. OK, I have shared in years gone by that when I'm in a grocery store, I like to pick somebody out that wouldn't necessarily expect it. And I go behind them with my cart and then I tell the person, go ahead, I got you. Now, I'm not saying that to, to lose my reward for doing it. 
I'm not trying to sound better than the average person, but that's how I live my life. So I don't just go out here and try to make money off of incidents that people were victim of, you know, earthquakes and wars and you know terrible things that took place, a currency collapse, you know, something that, you know, to that effect. That's going to cause reverberations in the marketplace. That's opportunity. And if I can profit from that, how I feel good about doing it is I go out and I'll find someone that's in need of something and I'll do something. Provide something for them, render a service to them, and that's it. No, no reward beyond that, just feeling good doing it. That's how I coped with it because early on I had I had that wrestling match. You know, am I really doing the right thing? Like I'm am I doing the right thing? And I look at it this way. There's a pa- there's a parable of the, the talents. Okay. And the one that was given the opportunity to multiply the talent, he went and buried it. He said, well, look, this guy, he's shrewd. <laughs> he, you know, if I lose this, he's going to be really upset with me. So I'm just going to go bury it. When he comes back, I'll get right back to him. And he was chastised because he did not at least put it in the bank. So he can do what? Get interest on it. That's investing, folks. That's speculating. So I don't think that God has an issue with trading or speculating. He has an issue with money changers, clearly. (laughs) Fashioned a whip right out of a rope and drove them out. Turned over the tables, released all the doves. So if you're expecting that blue-eyed, loving, hippie Jesus to come back, I don't think that's what you're going to be getting. But again, (laughs) I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to preach. But there's so many things in that book that you could literally draw so many parallels into how you should live your life as a trader. And you don't have to be a Bible thumper. Okay. You don't, I I don't go to a, a church. I don't go to a religious building full of people. I don't have any issue with people that do that, but I don't do that. I don't participate in Organized religion. I'm going to support those churches that act and operate like businesses. I don't think that's the model that was given to us in Acts. So when I talk to you folks, I know sometimes the topics, they don't feel like they're germane to you at the moment. But given enough time, you'll start thinking, he talked about that. And the 20-year-olds that are in my audience, maybe even the early 30-year-olds, you're, you're trying to find some way to connect with what I'm telling you today because it sounds like gloom and doom. Well, if you want to look at it from a perspective of not being prepared, not seeing opportunity in it, not being able to speculate on it, then yeah, I could see how easily that would be very depressing, scary, but I don't. I don't fear those things. Okay. I I don't worry about those things because if there is a system still in operation, okay, this is why I always tell everyone the algorithm is not going to stop working. They're going to implement it continuously. The markets themselves will be removed. Then it won't work because there is no market. But as long as there's a market, that's what they're employing, period. So don't worry about that. You have other things to worry about besides whether or not the algorithm is going to get changed or replaced with something else. It's efficient, folks. It's efficient. It's perfect. And when they need it to be something outside of itself, they will manually intervene. There it is. So there's no reason to be worrying about all those things. But... In all this mess, this is what is astonishing to me. You see all these folks out there, and I'm, I'm not, not listen, folks. I'm not trying to stir you up because I know these crypto people are like fanatics. Like you, like you. What did you say about my mother? <laughs> That's what it feels like sometimes. And I'm just giving you my opinion, and my opinion should be welcomed. You don't have to agree with it, but. In speculation, there has to be somebody that has the other opinion that's different from yours. And that should be welcomed. 
I look most of my time in the morning before the markets really present the kill zone times that I'm trading. I'm in forums. I'm on websites. I'm in people's Twitters. I'm in people's YouTube comment sections and trying to feel what the sentiment is. I'm interested in the other opinion. I'm not taking their trades. I'm going to trade against that sentiment. Now, I'm not saying you should fade what I'm saying here today. You're welcome to try that. But just know that if you do that, this could be very, very expensive and a different kind of expense where you may be ill-prepared for your household to sustain itself. Nobody, nobody sees how crypto was not the savior in all of this pandemic. That was the time for it to shine. And I sat back and waited to be wrong. Well, this will tell me if it's if this is really what it's pretending to be, then it should be shooting straight on up and, and nope. XRP future. Yeah. Future zero. All of these things are there to get you thinking outside of the normal money. And it's been effective. But I couldn't trust having my money parked in any of those things right now. Look at how much fraud has been going on. Think about it. My son's got 20,000 plus locked up. He can't do anything with it. He can't pull it out. He can't do nothing with it. That's frustrating for me because he didn't listen. My own flesh and blood, my firstborn, did not listen to me. And it fucking pisses me off. I want to throttle him, but it, he won't learn. The only thing he'll remember is dad basically blasted me and he didn't care that I went through it. When I do care that he went through it. Every single time I see someone ask me about Bitcoin or I see uh, a Bitcoin thing that's trending or any kind of crypto thing, it boils me up, man. I'm pissed off because he bought into that horse shit. Oh, it's just a new way of doing things. This is the new breed of trading. This is going to be able to smoke everything out there. Wrong. Wrong. That's hype. And when social media, it, first of all, Bitcoin would have never been able to do what it's done if social media was not even available. Would never, it would have never happened. Social media is the instrument that is weaving all of your thoughts and dreams together and you don't even see it. It's engineering the direction in your life, how you should think about things. And they will not be letting us have social media much longer. Not in the capacity you're used to using it. $44 billion. And he brought the kitchen sink in. Because it's going down the fucking drain. That was money laundering, folks. You just don't see it. Oh, let's get it all tied up in uh, bankruptcy. He's not outside of the discussion. Next year for Twitter. Hmm. I might be wrong here, folks, but just think about this for a second. What happens if Twitter just folds and it's not there and it's not sold or bought by someone else to keep it going? That's just one big venue where people can't communicate and share real time what's going on where they're at. So you can text your friends and family. A bunch of things that's going on. If shit starts going down where you're at in your country, in your neck of the woods, it's real easy for us to get on Twitter. There it is. This is what's going on. Share a video clip. And it's out there. People have it viral. What I see is the beginnings of them having the perfect excuse why you can't do it. It doesn't feel like Big Brother taking it from you, it just feels like some rich guy. Did something stupid, and now Twitter doesn't exist because of that. I don't see that at all. I see $44 billion transferring hands in a money laundering scheme. And they're going to take one more way of taking 
information exchange from us, all of us collectively. It just goes away. Just like I think PayPal, they think, you know, oh, PayPal is just trying to be this and that. You're going to charge somebody $2,500 and you're going to police whether something they say is truthful or not. I've already closed my PayPal account. I'm done. Gone. When they put that shit right back in there again, that was it. That that morning I called. I said, you're not letting me close the PayPal account. I have no interest in doing business with PayPal anymore. I'm done. Close the account right now. Are you sure, sir? Because we, I said, I am absolutely sure. Close my fucking account right now. Okay, it's done. All right. Piss off. What are they doing? They're removing another opportunity for currency exchange, doing business. Everything is slowly but surely like a noose around everyone's neck. The circle's being tightened smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and nobody sees it. Eventually, you're going to have this is the only way you can buy and sell. You got to use this means of currency, the central bank digital currency, where everything's tracked. It's on the blockchain because the blockchain's not going away. Just your favorite coins and cryptos are going to go away. They're going to be banned. Only the central bank digital currencies are going to be allowed. I told you if they made a futures contract on Bitcoin, that's the beginning of the end. Not ICT. He's full of shit. Well, I can afford to be wrong. I haven't been. But can you afford to be wrong? Holders. Holding on for dear life. Hoping and praying that things are going to be wrong and she can come back and say, ah, this didn't age well. I was preaching to my son. He wouldn't listen. And you all took it personal, like I'm talking to you. And he's in the situation I tried to prevent. And as a dad, as ICT, you know, it feels like failure. I feel like I, I don't know how else I could have done it, you know? I don't know how else I could have shown him what he was doing was the worst decision he could have done. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what. Looking back, I could have done anything different to make it even more impactful for him to not do it. He has me in him. And I remember how it was. And you've heard it in all my rants and such and sprinkled through my YouTube channel videos where my friends and family said, this is the stupidest thing in the world. And I can see how I would have been like him saying, look, dad, I love you and all, but fuck off. I'm going to prove you wrong. He's got that in me. Oh, he's got me in him in that sense. That DNA that's in me, that go fuck yourself. You know, tell me I can't do it. I'm gonna find twelve fucking ways where you're wrong, and I've done it better than anybody else. That's my outlook on life. Tell me I can't, and I'll do it better than anybody else. And I, I think that's what he was trying to do. And he failed, just like I went out there and traded with live money before I should have, and. Found out that it, I required a lot more you know, than just simply watching, well, not watching, but reading a book that had absolutely no fucking understanding about the markets whatsoever. But I got all built up in the hype. What hype was that? The little cassette tape that came with it and listening to these people talk about what they did. And it was interesting that one of those interviews said I lost money. If I would have heard some of those, I would have been like, well, maybe not yet. Let me do some thinking about it. But he only put in the interviews where people used what he taught in that stupid ass, I'm, I'm going to say course, and I'm referring to Ken Roberts in case you're wondering who I'm talking about, but back in the 80s and early 90s, this guy was like the largest influencer for commodity trading. And 
simple, stupid shit that people, <laughs> oh, nonsense. But like anything else, if someone wins at a casino, they make a big to-do about it, right? The bells come on, the lights flash, and the girls come out dancing around, bringing their shit to them. Look at this. This person's significant. Don't you want to be like them? Look at them. They just got 50 fucking dollars for all that casino. Little one-armed bandit. What do you call them? I don't know. I can't remember what the hell they call them. I don't go to casinos. <laughs> the, the shit. Now it's driving me nuts. What is that thing called? Ugh. I don't know what the hell they're called. You pull the little um, arm down and it spins the things around. And if it matches, you get a jackpot, whatever it is. I don't know what they're called. But whenever there's a winner, they make a big deal about it because they know. <gasps> let me go get it. Let me get more money off my ATM card because I, I want to have that experience too. Well, my son got caught up in all that stuff watching social media. On Facebook and people talk about, yeah, I did this with Bitcoin. I did this with Ethereum. I did this with Neocoin, Dogecoin, and all this other horse shit. I told him, I said, how can you, <laughs> how can you feel safe doing that? How can you feel comfortable trading in that shit when there's so many people ripping people off with it? They can't get their money out of the fucking exchange they're with. Exchanges are shutting down, running away. Coins are just, you know, scams. They, they, they stop doing whatever they're supposed to be doing. And they're they're running off with people's money. That's fucking scam. That's fraud. You don't see futures contracts doing that shit. You don't see that. Now, we don't trade pork bellies anymore. You know, we don't trade egg futures anymore. So if, if the volume doesn't permit it, then they'll just do away with the contract. But they don't fuck everybody while they're in the contract. Like they, they say, okay, this is going to stop trading. There it is. That's how you, that's how you run a, an efficient, honest business. Even though they are screwing people that don't know how to trade, it's still an opportunity. If you know what you're doing, you can make money. But he wouldn't listen. He couldn't see it. He was blinded by it. He wanted this stupid fucking Volkswagen. <laughs> Not a knock against Volkswagen, but I mean, really? That's the car you wanted? Whatever. It's paid off. It's his. Okay, he owns it. He sells his fucking car and pours all that money into the crypto. And he gets a credit card and borrows against that. In the crypto, and I didn't. I didn't hear from him for like seven months. I knew he was down. I begged him when, right when it was at the highs on ADA. I said, uh, "Son, listen to me. If you never listen to that about anything else, please just listen to me right now. Please, 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 just take half out right now. Put half on the sidelines. That way, even if." It does go down and it hurts you a little bit. You have something you can go back into later on, but don't risk it all. No, dad, I got this. Buy, buy this, buy this. And like, he's trying to sell me on it. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Like he's, he's really like committed to that 100%. And I've watched all of you out there over the years that have been championing it, like pushing it really hard and, and I get it. I mean, maybe you made a lot of money. That's great. I just don't have any faith in it personally. And there's so many things that I have against it. I would never invest in it. I would never do it. And what it's done to my son, he just left a really bad taste in my mouth about it. I don't want to ever touch crypto. And I wish he would have listened to me and took half out because it wouldn't have been that painful then. But he's caught up in some shit where it you near know, the Coinbase horse shit that's going on. He can't do anything with it.
over twenty some thousand dollars, which is insignificant. It's like it's that, that's that's nothing money. That's literally shit money. The fact that he didn't listen, the fact that he's hurt by it, and he still thinks it's going to turn around. Like, son, w- w- what the hell? Like, at some point, you got to know that this was a bad decision. Don't hold on to it thinking it's going to resurrect itself. It's not. So that's why <laughs> that's why I've been adamant about crypto. Just give me an inside track of what's going on. And what I was trying to avoid happened. You know, he fell victim to it. And most of all, you did too. I mean, you're, you had faith in something going to the moon. Going to the moon, baby. Well, maybe the moon's rotating on a different axis now. It's above and below us now. And if it's below us, then it would make sense it's going to the moon then. But that's not how things are. So, I used to get people coming at me in Twitter like, shut up, ICT. You're just trying to influence other people. No, I'm literally talking to my son. Just like I'm talking to my kids in the videos that you listen to on YouTube. That's why it feels like I'm talking to you. Because I have someone in mind as I'm talking. Somebody that I love, that I care about. And that resonates with you because you want someone that knows what they're talking about, that can prove it, and is talking common sense. So that, that's that connection you're feeling with me. But I'm talking to my flesh and blood. I'm talking to them. And I'm trying to reach them with the words I'm, I'm, I'm giving publicly. They have them forever. If something happens to me, they can always, always listen to dad. This is one time when I really wanted my son to listen to me and he didn't. And I think he's a little bit ashamed. He's embarrassed. He's expecting that typical ICT. I fucking told you so that he sees me do that with the public when people try to say this and that and thing. I would never do that to him. I would never do that to him. It would be, it would be more painful to do that than what he's already experienced. So I'm trying to give it time and trying to like gently guide him away from that shit and say, okay, you tasted what it was like to make a little bit of money, but then you got hurt. And that's no problem. I've blown accounts in the 1990s and it did not deter me. I'm still talking to you here. You can still see I push buttons and the bottom line is that the markets listen. So it's not failure in the final sense of the word or you can't ever do anything with this but he needs to come out of that crypto mindset and go to a real market no but crypto is a real market (laughs) not in my eyes it isn't something that is predictable that is not going to have the tomfoolery that it has in it okay Um, the exchange is going to just take your money and, and screw you over you know the cme is the CME, the Chicago Board of Trade, is the same thing. These exchanges aren't going to pull the shenanigans that these crypto shitbags are doing. And you know, you can take offense to that, you know, whatever. But that's the reality of it all. You know, if you look at all these old guys that's been around for a long time, I've always been interested in their opinion about crypto and such, and the ones that got wrapped up in it. I've seen over time how they were like, you know, I just should have stuck to the things that I knew. Does that sound like someone that made a good decision? No. And I saw, I'm not a, I'm not a football fan. Like, I don't really watch football. And I think the guy's name's Tom Brady. I think that's what the guy said. I saw a short on YouTube when... I'm going through the stuff and listening to people I like listening to and getting their opinions about shit for sentiment reasons. I'm not following anybody for what they're going to do, but this, uh, this fellow I've never seen before. He mentioned that, um, 
apparently Tom Brady and his wife separated or divorced or whatever. And he went back to playing football because he lost money in crypto. Now, I don't know if that's true. If it is, you know, give me a heads up or give me a link and show something about that. Because I, while I'm not a football fan, I would find it interesting to read up on what it is he did and how he fell victim to it. But you know, there's a lot of celebrities that got themselves in trouble, you know, by repping, you know, these crypto things and people really got hurt. It, that's, that's unfortunate. And that's why I wasn't touching none of that shit. Okay. If, if you have to have a celebrity tell you this is something good, Matt Damon, Kim Kardashian. Okay. Um, if those people are saying, this is what you should do for your financial future. It's smart. It's investing in your future. These people are not going to do that for free. Okay. They're being paid to do that, to say those words, because they're being paid to influence you. I don't give a fine fuck what Matt Damon says about anything. I ain't buying nothing that that man would ever say in anybody else. Okay. If you haven't made money doing it and aren't showing me that you did it and you made money with it, I don't give a fuck about your opinion about any of that shit. That's all dumb shit. That's that's the the basis of why I talk the way I talk, because that's how this operates. This whole world's just like that. It's all fuckery. It's always find the victim and maximize how much you can fleece from them. And that's bullshit. You can make money and still help people. You don't have to be crooked about it. You don't have to be fucking a fraud. Okay. If something's good, prove that it's good. And then say, okay, this is what I did with it. And here, you see what you did with it. I mean, I got all the respect in the world for something like that. But if a celebrity or someone that's an influencer and they're repping a, com a company or a coin or a crypto or any kind of horseshit like that, man, that's a that's the easiest one to run, run away from. What was that one? Like I said, I'm not a crypto person, but I remember there was a um, an infomercial that was cu coming up on, on uh, YouTube all the time where Matt Damon's walking by and he's looking out like it's like, like in, in outer space or some shit like that. Like, what the hell? Like, that right there, that screams failure. Like, that right there is going to fail. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that's one that just recently did fail. I just don't know what the name of it is. But you're going to see a lot of shit like that in 2023. A lot of your cryptocurrency things, they're all going to be shit just completely done away with. And what is that going to do to the public's perception about crypto? Hell no. I'm not touching that stuff. And then what's going to happen? Here's the solution. Here's the solution because the dollar sucks now because it, it, it's not backed by the oil market anymore. Can't go to crypto. So what are you going to do? You can't just go and start using the ruble or one. That, that can't be accepted in America. So the central bank digital currency. Here you go. The savior. And get everybody on the blockchain. And once that's done, it's all going to be unified on the one. There's no way that's where we're going. You just don't see it yet. That's a little ways down the road. But they first got to get you off of cash. And that's going to be easy next year. Real quick, real sudden. You're not stopping it. I can't stop it. I don't even lose sleep over it. I'm not worried about it. But all these things translate into huge opportunities in the commodity markets next year. Because if grains can't be produced at the level they're supposed to be, and they don't meet their yield, how much they're able to harvest, that means there's going to be less food going into the grocery store. That means what? The supply, the real supply, will be small. Very, very low. What's that going to do for prices? Hyperinflation through the roof. Supply and demand. So if that's happening or likely to happen, 
wouldn't it be interesting for you to start studying what those grain markets are doing over the next six to nine months? Because I believe that we're going to see enormous bull markets in the grain markets in 2023. Like straight up, never been seen before type of moves. And they've laid the groundwork for it because they know everybody's looking for crypto bull markets. Everybody wants the stock market to turn around. Oh, look at this. We had a nice little bounce on uh, stocks. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go in a straight line, folks. You have to get people wanting to do what? You have to get them to buy it. Downtrends, whether they're parabolic or stair-stepping, okay? Every time there's a short-term little low there, there is an enormous hope that comes in thinking that's the low. That's the bottom. Let's buy it. But just in case it isn't, let me put my stock loss right below that low. That's why you have these little corrections. It's not because buyers came in and there was a, a lull in the sellers. That's the horseshit that they tell you. It's not that, folks. <laughs> it's not that. Once it gets to an objective, then they start repricing it higher. Any market orders that come in, they get filled at that market price, and they just keep booking it higher, 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 higher. And if you're short, you get squeezed out of it, which causes it to do what? You buy it more. So you're exiting at a higher price that they keep offering to the marketplace. You're forced to trade there if you're in a trade or you're suffering through the loss. So my point in saying this is they create these short-term little rallies to engineer sentiment shifts where oh, it's the low. Well, maybe it's bullish for the stock market now. There ain't a fucking thing bullish about this stock market right now. It's absolutely nothing bullish about the stock market. Nothing. There's no optimism that makes any bit of sense. And all you're seeing is reasons for people to do what? Buy into that hope. See, normally, we create the low of the, the year and then starts trading higher right about now. And I'm expecting this one to fail because that's the normal seasonal thing. I teach my students this between as early as uh, September into the half of November. In those weeks, we look for an SMT divergence. Dow Jones goes lower, NASDAQ goes lower, SP doesn't make that lower low, or one of them. And that's enough to start looking for a run up into February. Real easy move, real easy thing that repeats most years. This ain't a typical kind of year. Like, it's, there's a whole lot of things going on, man. We got war. We got corruption everywhere. And I ain't going to go to the laundry list of things that, you know, I've talked about in the past. But nothing's normal. And normal ain't coming back. And normalcy in markets for sentiment is usually there's a low that's formed in the fall. And you can work with that going into February of the following year. Sometimes, you know as long as February, but usually through the first half of January. So you have a, a tradable fall rally. And then how we work into springtime where it creates a short-term high and then intermediate-term high and then trades down through the summer, making, again, the fall lows. I am of the opinion that that is not going to happen this year. They're going to give you what we're seeing right now, that little short-term turn, it looks like it's made a bottom. It looks like, it looks like the, that we're done. We've seen capitulation. We have not seen capitulation. No. Mm -mm. Think about it, folks. This has been going up for a while. So they have to get people to do what? Buy in to bring in new sellers below the lows. Because if you're short from the highs, you have to have someone to do what? Sell to you buying to cover your short. That's why these market creates, or these markets rather, create these short-term lows in bear markets. It's not 
an absence of sellers and an overtaking of the buyers. That's the biggest load of bullshit. That's bullshit. And you all believe it because thousands of books keep repeating the same horseshit. And it's all lies. It's fucking lies, man. Just take a step back and think. This is this is what drives me nuts, man. There ain't no algorithm. The fuck there ain't. There is. <laughs> okay, there absolutely is. There is no smart money out there. It's it's buying and selling pressure. It's supply and demand. Man, shut the fuck up. You have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. You still work a fucking job, and you're going to talk to me about what you fucking believe the markets are doing. Go fuck yourself. The hell out of here, man. These markets are absolutely 100% rigged, period. All the time, every minute that they're open, they're rigged. Your pursuit should be how are they rigged and who do they victimize? And don't be a part of that group. That's what my YouTube channel does. It keeps you from falling into that category of ill-informed speculator. You have no excuse now. Once you go through those videos, what videos? All of them. What video should I start with? Whatever one you want to start with, but watch all of them. You want to have something that goes right into finding a pattern and you can start studying right away? That's the 2022 mentorship. There you go. 41 videos. Boom. Done. It'll whet your appetite. Trust me. But you'll be able to make money there too. You'll know what you're looking for. It simplifies, brings everything in one Easily wrapped up package where here it is. You know, you got 41 videos to watch. And I covered more things than I intended to teach in that. And it's good. It's really good. I'm going to be honest with you. It's better than my private mentorship teachings were because I didn't sit down and give them a straight to the point, easy, fast, off the cuff model where you can go in there and trade it every single day. Because I have people in there ripping me off. So to counter that, I did it for free out there. Now, they know how to make that model. None of them just sat down and did it, though. They can make all kinds of models. They've been trained as charter members. They know how to do things. But human things creep in, and they just want me to do it for them. I understand. But it can't be your model if I give it completely to you. That model, as good as it is, is going to inspire most of you out there to think, oh, yeah, I can see how I can use these other things he talked about in the Market Maker Primer course. I can implement that. And, man, that's great. And that's your unique model. You don't need to. It's a complete full approach. You just bring your money management that matches you, how much you're willing to risk. Apply it to the 2022 Mentorship Series. There's 41 videos. You will never, ever, ever. Listen to me, folks. You will never, ever, 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 ever need to watch another ICT video again. You never need to buy another fucking course from anybody. You don't need to subscribe to any other YouTubers. You, need, you don't need to watch anybody else out there pretending to know smart money concepts. These fucking guys. Every time I go on YouTube, I see, hey, are you using these patterns here? Well, this is all garbage. This is all my stuff. That's my that's my patter. That's my banter. That's, the, I, these, that's my shtick, okay? <laughs> and they're out there. They ain't mentioned me, though. And they're out there selling. This is what we teach our members. And if you can't make money with this, you don't have to pay. Guaranteed. Well, let me tell you what's going to happen with that kind of guy. The CFTC is going to be like, oh, you said guaranteed, did you? Well, we can guarantee your ass is going to be looked into. So I know you're listening. Easy, Forex. You might want to change your shit. So the... Uh, 2023 year is froth with opportunity, but it's also going to come at a cost. It's going to be dangerous. It's going to be probably scary for most people. But the main thing is for you not to be afraid by being prepared. Get yourself some non-perishable food. So that way, when you're trading, you're not worrying about, oh, I can't trade because I can't afford to buy the food that's going to be too expensive now. You have it taken care of. And that way you're not panicking and worrying about things that's going to be an external influence on your decision making processes. That psychology element, no educator 
listen to me, folks. I'm going to sound like a crack. Do you hear my stomach? I'm hungry. I haven't eaten anything all day, and I'm starving. I'll feed you in a minute. Relax. No other educator out there would ever step out here and talk the shit I'm talking to you. Because they have an image. They want you to buy their bullshit, their course, their signal service, their nonsense. I can sit here and be honest and objective with you because I know what's coming. I know I can't stop it. But I'm telling you how I'm navigating it. There is no secret other you know, process that I'm doing. I don't have a place where I can store my money that's going to be protecting it from all the bullshit that's potentially coming. There ain't nothing that anybody's going to be able to do to stop this kind of shit. If the banks say, you know, your money's ours. There ain't nothing I can do. Just like they ain't going to be able to be stopped on your end. Whatever you have in your checking account, if they say that's it, this is the way it is, that's it. And they're going to remove the opportunity for people that say, I'm just going to take all my money at the bank and store it in mason jars in the back of my yard, in between the mattresses and behind the drywall in my home. When cash is no longer allowed, you can't do anything with that stuff. And then what happens when you go into putting it back in the market or not the market, the, the bank, when they say you have this much time to bring your cash on deposit. Or it's worthless. Don't think it can happen. <laughs> Watch. Watch. What do you think is going to happen with all the cartels when that shit hits the fan? You're going to see all kinds of wars. People are going to be real pissed off. It, like, this is a perfect storm. Like, there's so many things converging right now, and it's dangerous. It's dangerous. And the last thing you should be worried about is who's the better trader? <laughs> no, no, no. You better get your house in order because there's all kinds of shit coming for all of us. So, what are you going to do? Don't ask me what I'm doing. I've already told you. What are you going to do? Are you going to pretend like all oh, this is this? Well, I don't buy into any of this bullshit. It was entertaining listening to this crackpot, but you know, I'm going to go to work next week the same way, and I'm going to trade the same way, and next year is going to be the same thing, and nothing's going to happen. And Okay. I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong. I do. I absolutely want all of you to be able to laugh at me and say, man, how's it feel to know that all that precaution that you were putting out there was not needed and none of this happened? I'm glad. I want to be able to say I'm glad and it's a good laugh. But I don't think that punchline's coming. I've been 10 years ahead of everything. closer to 11 years. I thought I had a little bit more time when I stepped out on baby pips, but things started ramping up quick. And now it's like, you're going to see it. I mentioned it when we were doing the summer Twitter spaces. I was sitting in a parking lot in the pickup truck and I was talking to you. And I was mentioning how the central bank digital currencies were going to be coming and what that meant for people. And I was trying to get you ready for it. That, that moment, right after that space, things started getting really aggressive and they sped up everything. And they even announced that they're going to try to speed up things that they had an agenda for 2030. Now they want to do it sooner. And these things are going to speed up more aggressively. And everybody's expecting that red wave to save them in the elections. I told you, don't wait for that because that's not going to be there. There you go. See, you're placing your hope and trust in man. Mm -mm. Nope. As nice as you probably think I am, and I'm trying to be very cordial to all of you and help you. Push come to shove. If it was a matter of my family eating. Or you, my family's eating. 
I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass. That's just the reality of it. Okay. I don't give a fuck about my personal image out here on the public. I'm telling you, this is the way it is. And you should be thinking the same way. Whatever you can obtain to make sure your house is ready. You should be doing that. Worst thing in the world for you to do is start going out and telling all your friends and family that's what you're doing. Because they're going to give you 50 fucking reasons why that's stupid. And either you won't do it. Or. They're going to try to take from you. So you have to make sure you have means of protecting yourself and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, but I don't support that. Well, I don't care what you support personally. I support it. Friends dressed in brass are good friends to have. They run real fast. And when you need them, it's good to have them. If you need them and you don't have them, it ain't fun. And we're going into a world where you're going to wish you have that, that type of resource. So food has been weaponized. Food and water futures. Grains and water futures. I'm watching the water futures contracts. The, the whole business of water. You see how many bodies of water have been drying up over the last 24 months? Have you paid any attention to that? Probably not. Where's all the water going? Think. Think. You just don't want to believe it. Science fiction level shit coming, folks. Whether you're ready for it or not. But that's a, that, that science fiction level stuff is going to produce the most amazing opportunities. And I'm occupying while I can. I'm not going to sit around huddled up in a fetal position where I'm at the end of the world. No. I'm going to be staying active and doing what I can to prepare for it with my family. And I'm being open with you. I'm telling you how I'm doing it. I'm not saying that I have the answer to it. I'm just saying instead of worrying about it and being anxious and scared and maybe some of you are, I had Somebody sent me a message on uh, Twitter, not direct messages. I don't direct message anybody and nobody can direct message me, but they replied to one of my Twitter spaces in the last few that I did. They said, I couldn't watch it. I turned off. It was, it was scaring me. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to create some kind of fear porn thing. If I had a friend that knew Something terrible was about to happen. And that friend didn't tell me. I couldn't consider them a friend. I have been open about this. The entire time. I've warned about certain things and you've watched it come to pass. I've warned about this is what they're going to do next and it's coming to pass. I'm not a prophet. I'm not trying to say I have clairvoyance or ESP. I'm just telling you. Look around. Connect the dots, folks. They're keeping everybody distracted so they don't do the same thing common sense would do. That's all you're going to be required to use here is common sense. They're keeping you distracted with all kinds of dumb shit. Instead of paying attention to the right things, which is what I'm talking about. Getting your house ready. Universal basic income, that will be a thing. Do you want to be a subscriber to that? I don't. I don't want my family members to have to be on the government tit. Because you have to do everything they tell you then. You got to have this vaccine or you can't get your monthly benefits. No thanks. No thanks. Yes, I went there. So that was what I had on my mind today. <laughs> and in closing, I want to talk a little bit about CPI and that event the other day. And that way we can go into next week with the last week of ICT 
before he goes into hibernation until February. Does that mean I won't tweet? Yeah, I'll tweet. <laughs> I'm not actively trading, though. I'm not doing anything in the marketplace, and I'll probably just annoy you with the tweets I'm putting out. They're not going to be educational, probably. There's going to be something, you know, you're not going to you're not going to be edified by it. Basically, this is going to be me entertaining myself. But the past, so I guess the last five years, I've not really done what I've done prior to doing mentorship, which would be the week before Thanksgiving week. I'd close all charts and all the time would be focused on my family and the holidays and friends. And I love the ambiance of it. I love the whole. I just this I live for this time of year. Like I love it. I'm so happy around this time of year. I love sharing with people and and doing things for other people. And I just love it. I love the season. I love it. it's cool outside. I hate the summer. I can't stand the summer. I hate the heat. And I love the fact that you know friends and family and just everybody's spirits just changes around this time of year. And it's just I love it. And I've not been able to enjoy it because I've been inundated with running this mentorship and so many different people all around the world, you know, multiple intakes. I'm so glad I'm not doing it anymore. And I'm just looking forward to having that time where I can just be me and not ICT for a couple months. Do you need to do that? I don't know. I just know I missed doing it and putting such a workload on me, you know, bringing in new students and it's just a lot to think a lot, a lot of things that manage and people's personalities are, you know, they're hard to work with and you can do everything in the world for them. And I could sit down and put you in profitable trades and some of these people would still bitch, but you didn't give me this and you didn't tell me I could have done this. I could have done five contracts instead of four, you know, they'll, they'll bitch about something. So that's one of the things I'm glad I'm not doing mentorship for because I, I've had literally I've had students making money and complain that they wish it was more. Dude, really? You just started. <laughs> you just started and then you're making money and then you're going to complain like what the hell? But, you know, people are weird like that. So CPI number came out the other day and obviously I did my best to warn you. Before it did, I told you this is not something we trade. We don't expect to trade. Uh, we're not bracketing the market with a buy limit above or or a stop above and a sell stop below it and let the market trigger you in because that's lunacy. That's absolute lunacy. Here, break it off of my ass. Don't use any lube. Hard and deep. Let's go. That's what you're asking for. And that's exactly, that's exactly what people out there that don't know what they're doing or promoting other people to do. That's stupid. That's not smart. Okay. That is dumb. You have to understand there's risk. And that kind of risk with the CPI number, I told you walking into it, I said, listen, this is what I'm going to subscribe to. And this is what I'd like to see. I'm not trading it, but I want to see this unfold. If it does, that's great. It's a great observation. But this CPI number generally is a straight line right from 830 to where it's going. And it doesn't give you a chance. It doesn't give you a chance, folks. So if you're welcoming you know, the opportunity to be slipped on, what, 20-some handles, 30-some handles in the S&P, who knows what you're getting slipped in other markets? Like, that's nuts. That's Russian roulette. Seriously. Like with three bullets, <laughs> come on. Yeah, I'll have uh, impossibility uh, trading for 500. And uh, I mean, I'm gonna try to do this every single time. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't do that and expect to live long in this industry. You gotta have a reason to be doing what you're doing. You have to expect it, see it, and then understand where the risk is. So on the CPI number, I went out and I said, look, this is what I think could happen i'd like to see this unfold but it's not tradable so don't do it and i'm most likely wrong it's going to be a straight line right on up and it won't even respect that fair value gap so there was no trade mentioned there i just want to observe with you real time 
and also really built the case that I wanted you to push a button. And when you're paper trading account, I wanted you to push it so that we can see these people are fake to say that they get in there and they trade it. Okay. The biggest mouth right now, the biggest mouth doesn't have any trade on CPI. <laughs> so go fuck yourself. So listening to these people, these clowns, okay, telling you to walk into that danger, not respecting it, not even observing the, the level of damage that you could inflict on yourself. That is the epitome of irresponsibility. So what I teach is let that report or ones like it, like even FOMC, oh, ICT doesn't trade FOMC. I don't trade the FOMC right before it releases. No, I don't. I don't do that. But I can trade it, and my students have seen it after it releases. But you have to wait for that two-stage delivery because FOMC is two stages. It's one manipulation, and then the real move comes, like a tidal wave, like a hurricane, actually, where a hurricane out in sea, it draws all the water away from the shore. New people that move down to Florida you know, because they're trying to run from the Democratic states. <laughs> I'm hiding in a democratic state. Okay. I, I, okay. This way I'm in a neighborhood where uh, we're, we're not going to have crackheads, you know, on a corner of our house or in an area here. Okay. Most democratic states are poorly ran and I'm sure you can list Republican states are the same way, but all this stuff's going to fall on every state and they're going to target Florida and Texas. I'm just going to remind you of all that stuff. So you didn't run anywhere except to where the problems are going to be really directed at but recently we just saw a hurricane down in florida and the new members of florida that just moved down there they were making videos saying where did all the water go this is weird not realizing that people that have lived down there for a long time know that when there's a hurricane it draws the water out to it and then when it comes ashore it's bringing all that water and more well that's what fomc is like you see that initial pool and and makes these you know, big movement, that's not the real move. That's not the real move. The real move is when the eye of the storm comes back in and all that move gets erased and goes the other direction. That's how you trade FOMC. There's your cookie for being this long here. I love doing that and I love tucking it in where everybody else is going to tap out. Oh, this guy can't listen to this shit. This guy's talking about grocery stores, running out of food. I'm trying to make money, man. Yeah. Try to make money starving. Because you won't. But CPI, its characteristic is a straight line. Right from 830, boom. I'm sorry. I'm not perfect. I can't do that. I can't, I can't trade that and know with absolute assurity that I'm going to be correct. I don't, I don't know how they're going to manipulate that because they can go in manually and do something completely unexpected and send the market. 100%, well, 180 degrees rather, from where I expect it to go. So since I know that's a likelihood, that's why I said, you know, don't trade this. You wait. You wait, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to look and see. And I was reading the market real time with you. There was no trades in there talked about until we talked about that fair value gap that was at the old high, and we were going to draw up into that volume imbalance. And then I executed, and you saw it in all the partials. I shared the screenshot, and there it is. <clears throat> so you can't escape that. I watched every single one minute candle with you, told you what I was looking for, what I would like to see unfold. And since it couldn't go down and take that sell side liquidity, and then it left that volume imbalance on the daily chart, I told you that was going to be the draw on liquidity. There's that shift. Now, so some of you are sending tweets saying, what made you change your mind about looking for it to go up? Well, that's what I just said here. I even talked about the fair value gap, how, I see the fair value gap, and you can see it too, but I would not short that because the volume imbalance had not been traded to ahead of the 9.30 or at 9.30 in equities opening. If it traded up into that, then it went lower, then I'd feel confident being bearish. But because they left that there, I can't trade that fair value gap as a short. It could, and I could be wrong in that regard, but I'm not taking that as a trade. I'm going to look for it to run out the high. And then we'll see if it gives, you know, gives another opportunity. And you can't look at this as buying in a premium because I saw this also. So basically what you were saying is you, you can buy in a premium. What we just watched was the market didn't deliver that volume imbalance 
you know, retraded back up to it at 930. It left it there and then corrected right from the opening. That's your Judas swing. So if it didn't go where I was wanting to see it go, which was that volume imbalance on the daily chart, that little pink shaded area on the chart I, I tweeted after CPI, that's going to be the draw on liquidity. If we can't get that sell side liquidity that I mentioned or the lower fair value gap, it couldn't trade down there. And I mentioned, I said, I want to see it trade down below that. And then if it acts as resistance, I would be comfortable trading that. Listen to everything I said in the CPI. Vinny, taking shit out of context. <laughs> you want me to be ass poor like you fucking pretend I am. I am absolutely dialed in. And join 2023, motherfucker, because I will smoke your motherfucking candy ass in the Robin's Cup with one account. You better bring your shit for real because this is it. You'll never be able to talk about me ever again if you don't do this one. I gave you this whole year. You didn't do shit. You, know, you thought I was going to go through this entire fucking space and not bring up your Mickey Mouse ass? Absolutely bring it. Bring it, bitch. I'm so ready. I've been sitting here on Twitter all year long. You're on Twitter, but you ain't talking to me. You created that little handle you did a Twitter space with. You motherfucking coward. Talk to me directly. I'm here. Nobody can block shit. Nobody can block shit. I'm right here, motherfucker. Bring everything. I want all that smoke. <sighs> It's mine. Give it all to me. Okay? I'm here. I cleared my whole fucking schedule for your clown ass. And you did nothing but make memes and bullshit. <laughs> yeah. See how I can change gears? Just like in the marketplace. Different direction. One execution. Winner. That volume imbalance on the daily chart, if it would have been hit at 9.30, traded there first, that would have satisfied me as that was enough to go higher because they were building it up, pumping up, pumping up, pumping up. If it would have hit that, that would have exhausted it for me. And then any breakdown in, or shift in market structure going lower, then I would have felt comfortable going back into that actual liquidity void I was mapping out on that second chart. Or a 15 second chart or five second. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was, but it was less than one minute. But I, I tweeted somebody out there that was actually walking through it live and marking up their chart, doing exactly what I wanted all of you to do. So I shared that. And I don't know if it's a gentleman or if it's a, a lady. Forgive me for that. I don't know. But you did a wonderful job keeping up with it and annotating exactly what I was talking about at the time. Initially, I thought you were off but then you, you you found yourself and that's good but you can literally see me mapping out the individual one minute candles saying okay this is what i want to see here i'm not calling shorts here i'm saying i want to see price deliver a certain way if it doesn't do that if it doesn't if it can't go to a discount array like say it's a liquidity pool below the marketplace like sell side if it can't take sell side when you're expecting it to and it has yet to trade to a premium array like that daily volume imbalance was. If it fails to go to the lower discount, it's going to go for what? The premium. And it can only be seen after CPI has hit the market. You can't stand in front of that, just like you can't stand in front of FOMC rate announcements. You can't do that, folks. You can't. You have no idea what they're going to do. I don't know what they're going to do. So you have to let them go in there like a bulldozer, basically just plowing through. And once that occurs, then the markets will return back to a normal delivery where you can trust the things I'm used to seeing. But I can't trust anything going into them because it's 50-50. It's it can go up or down, but the chances of you failing are better than 50 because that's just the way it is. Whatever you're likely to do before CPI comes out, you're probably going to be wrong. Go into that report every time with that mindset and just wait and see what they run for and what they leave. If they don't go to a specific premium array or a discount array, that's a clue. So if they can't take it down to take sell side, there's no need for it. They're going to go pressing higher to a premium. And that was that daily volume imbalance. They went to the low end of it, hit that. And I said, okay, now we watch the middle of it, hit that. And then we look for the high of it, 
boom, it hit that. And then it corrected and walked down to the lower end of it. Folks, that's precision. And you cannot argue that. That's beautiful. But it can only occur after the CPI number hits the marketplace and that initial shock wave where all that manipulation is done, then they take their hand off of it and let the algorithm go back in control. And that's how I was able to see what I was seeing. But I know when they're likely to manipulate where my algorithm isn't going to be able to communicate to me. It's just simply going to be violence. Violence. So I know that's likely to occur. And the characteristic for CPI is what? Straight line damage. FOMC, two directions. First move's fake. Second one is a real move. So you just learned today how to trade those two huge high-impact news drivers. Now, there's a lot more things you got to incorporate to that. But by far and large, that's beyond anything you find in any book. You're welcome. So anyway, <laughs> Vinny, I hope you fucking do. Please join. You're saying to the public that you joined the Robins Cup. Motherfucker, you can't join the 2023 Robins Cup yet. They, they, they don't have it in place yet. That is not how it works. 2023 has to come before you can join up. And 2022 is closing in a couple of weeks. So full of shit. <laughs> so fuck all that. You got to get on the leaderboard first. Okay. Let's, we're starting the same time. I don't need you to get on the leaderboard. You just need to start. Get in there, and I'll be in there too. And then we'll see who the fuck wins. I guarantee you, you won't even get on the leaderboard. You won't even appear. <laughs> Pussy. So. I'm not sure how many people are listening. I'm looking here. I got the. Uh, I'm going to take three questions. I'm going to do a live, okay, and then we'll close it. I'm not sure how you guys t ask to talk to me, but uh, the first three I see, I'll give you a couple minutes with me. I'm trying to see how you do it. I guess re request to ask me a question or talk to me. Yuga man, Yuga man, that's you. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Ugman, Ug Ugman. Oh yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, I you are on the radio with ICT. Hello, what's up? Yeah, I'm good. I'm calling you from East Africa. Um, so I, I just have a question. What would be your sure. What would be your advice uh, when it comes to special? Can, can you hear me? I heard up to what would be your advice for yeah. taking special and that was yeah. It. What would be your advice if I wanted to specialize, especially um, on the pairs that I trade? Say, for example, I trade two pairs and um, maybe gold or oil. What would be your advice um, to avoid, you know, like going through so many pairs? Um, would that actually help me improve and also be able to learn a lot, especially uh, in the behavior of the market? My opinion is, is the, the best advice I would give anybody is pick one market. Now, you can if you're trading two pairs, you said you mentioned two pairs. What pairs do you trade? Um, I trade GBP, USD, and I also do uh, Euro, USD. Okay, so that's right out of the book of ICT. So you can trade one, but use both of them for correlated pair SMT studies. In other words, you, you're going to look at the relationships between both of them, but you're only going to trade one. And avoid who cares what gold's doing, who cares what oil's doing, because they're going to dilute your attention. And all the money you'd ever want to make can be found in one market. 
Fantastic. Thank you very much. And uh, regards from Uganda, I really, really love what you do. Uh, I've been your student on YouTube and it's it's been amazing. Awesome. Thank you, brother. All right. The second one here is T-R-S-T-N. I don't know if that's an abbreviation or something, but you're up. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you <laughs> very much for bringing me up. So I am actually studying economics in college. And your series, I've probably watched over 300 hours of um, lots of the things that you've posted. And I'm currently writing a paper. And I have two questions. One of them is... Have you found any relationship between market mechanics and Latour's actor network theory, where the market is based among three different factors? There's an actant, there's a network, and then there's a connection. The network could be considered the stock or the ticker. The actant could be considered liquidity and the players and the connections could be considered cycles. I will say this, that is a very fruitful area to mine. If you're seeing th if you're seeing things there, you're on the right track. Would you be interested in reading this paper once I'm finished? Uh, you broke up. Say it again. Would you be interested in reading this paper whenever I'm finished to give your thoughts? I would absolutely love to see that. Awesome. Thank you very much. And then I have one more question. Um, you've talked about Enigma. Now, is your you say that Enigma is not based on any technicals. It's not based on any charting. It is based purely on your concepts. My question is, does it have anything to do with quadrant theory? Go back to where you said it has nothing to do with charts. Everything after that, it was all, I couldn't understand what you said. Does um, Enigma have anything to do with quadrant theory? No, it does not. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Those were the only two questions I had. Uh, I think your work is brilliant and um I'd love to send you that paper if I could get some type of address to send it to you or um, something just like tweet, that. Just tweet to me repeatedly. If I don't, if I don't see it, I'll see it if you spam me, and then I'll, I'll reply with the way you can get it to me. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. All right. The third and last one is H. O V. I don't know again if that means a name or what. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? If you gotta turn your mic on, I think. Okay, don't hear me now. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, okay. I'm from Nigeria. I watch your YouTube videos a lot. I want to ask a question concerning um, um strategy changing. Does does like a strategy change over time? That was like something that, that always really bothered me. Like for example, if you are changing a strategy for let's say a year, does it change over time? Let's say the next two years, like have a reduced win rate or something like that. I'm having a hard time understanding what you're saying, but do me a favor, turn turn your volume down because I can hear me talking. Okay, okay, let me just turn on this part. Okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, my question was concerning does the strategy change over time? Like, you are creating a strategy for, let's say, for an example, you're creating a strategy for one year, and the following year you have 
it reduces me weight. Does it mean your strategy changes? Does your strategy change over time? Not not basically your own life. For example, I have a trading model I trade. Then at the end of at the end of the year, I have reduced me weight. Does it mean like your strategy changes in the way the market behaves? Okay, I think I, I think I know what you're asking me. You're asking if or will my or does my strategies change over time? Is that correct? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, that does not happen. But what does happen is the market conditions. So that's the reason why I have so many different strategies because I have a, a strategy for. Do me a favor. Turn your volume down. Okay, sorry. Is it, is, it, is it clear now? I have strategies for different profiles and characteristics of the marketplace. Like I can trade in reversal scenarios. I can trade in trending markets. I can trade in consolidation markets. I can trade in just about any market opportunity that the market will present us. I have my preferred ways of trading. So while I have strategies that I, if I had to sit down and trade, I could. But I like sp uh, specific things that I like to see that are easy for me, not time demanding. And it's, I can get in, get it done, and leave for the day. So no, my strategies or pro uh, not my, my strategies do not change over time. What you're experiencing is you're trying to see one strategy that would be utilized in one particular characteristic or profile of the market. And you're trying to squeeze it into that current market condition. And it doesn't fit. So you have to use other strategies that my YouTube channel even covers. So if it's a reversal market re profile where it's likely to go up and, in, and drop, there's strategies that will help you do that. But you can't look at like trend continuation strategies in that environment because they would obviously fail. And for someone that's new, it would feel like the strategies are changing over time versus just simply not aligning themselves with the current market condition and the proper strategy for that market condition. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Thank you so much. You're very, very welcome, sir. Thank you, brother. All right. Well, I picked the first three. And please don't be offended if I don't, because I see there's more people asking. But I'll do this each time I do a, a, a live stream now. I'll take three people. Just do me a favor if I connect with you. Turn your volume down when you're asking the question because it's going gonna, it's gonna to give me feedback or vice versa. Like if, if I'm talking, I'm giving you the answer. Turn your volume down because I'm competing with my own voice, which pisses me off. <laughs> I can't concentrate. I'm trying to hear what the guy's talking about, and it's me. But anyway, that's going to be it for today. I think I've consumed enough of your time and if this was entertaining for you let me know if you learned anything let me know and if you didn't learn anything let me know that too and i'll use it as constructive criticism until next time be safe